Um, good afternoon. As you've heard, my name is Karen Neville and I'm a lecturer in the Business Information Systems Department in UCC. And we produce graduates who are to become information systems professionals, whether they're developing systems, whether they're talking to customers about what kind of systems they want, so providing companies with a competitive edge using technology. And I, have un I undertook the CERT in um, teaching and learning, the diploma and the MA. And for the MA, and Marion is my supervisor, I, taught, I wanted to look at things that kind of frustrated me in teaching. And a big thing was actually even, I mean, no matter that you go through the teaching for understanding and planning out the lessons and that they understand the theory, it's trying to kind of combat the um, problems associated with students that are coming into us that they don't really, they use social media or they think that social media kind of text speak, you know, if, uh, with the emails that we get, that they're very much kind of, um, they don't know how to, how to write professional emails, they don't know how to write professional reports, presentations. And it might sound silly, and this is a problem across all colleges, we're getting feedback from industry that, that this is causing problems, that they don't know how to be, uh, I suppose, business professionals. They don't know how to do, how to present, they don't know how to write those reports. And I think that social media was you know, really impacting their skills there and how to communicate. So I wanted, I have to both to develop these professionals and I also wanted to do something about these issues, these challenges around social media. So I thought I can't ignore social media. It's there, Facebook, Twitter, um, using their mobile phones and to kind of, I should really embrace it in terms of teaching. So what I did and focused on um, my, my MA was on looking at how exactly what I need to do, what kind of skill sets do I need to make sure that my students, besides the core problem solving, the development skill sets that they need, how do I ensure that they are able to work in a professional environment and also kind of how to use social media effectively for that. So a big problem that industry have identified as well is that generation 2020, the workplace, what it's going to look like. So you're going to have people out in the workplace who um, professionals have been working there for 20 years, working alongside students, graduates, who are very much into social media and how, how they can combine those. So I thought the objective to kind of look at a learning environment that supports the needs of this generation 2020 and then the skill sets investigating it and then how I will support them. So as Marion said, um, I'm just going to be talking about what I did for my MA, but also in terms of what I'm doing now, how I continued on from that. And I have a lot of diagrams, so as part of it, I kind of looked at what are the drivers, what are the challenges in industry, what kind of professionals are they looking for in IS knowledge workers? And things like, um, kind of, I surveyed graduates in industry and also our current students. But then third level driver is what we need. We need to engage students in creativity. We need to uh, kind of support them. We need to ensure the quality. So not the latest fads and technologies, but also problem solving core skills as well to ensure that they're not in any way impa negatively impacted. And we also kind of, uh, uh, Marion was talking about evidence earlier on, and Betty that we need a, a big evidence for a third level for any courses, retention, that they move on and do postgraduate courses as well, and we get good evidence, uh, feedback from industry about our graduates. I looked at kind of like identifying the um, students, mapping the student skills, what they need in terms of personal skills, how they need to kind of look at processes, working out and the technology as well, and then customising their student needs, having a learning environment where the individual as well as the peer can learn. And as you can see then as well on the right hand side about the kind of um, technologies drivers. So leveraging technology, leveraging social media in my uh, teaching. And as I said, the processes, the skills, looking at the ability to learn, to develop their own skills, uh, ability to understand a task and to kind of to target that task. And if it's a customer's task as well, a real problem situation, how they go about it. Having those professional <coughs> skills looking at how they would work in other groups and other teams, and then as well using that techno technology to help them in their in learning. 
So my own study, um, I focused on kind of like looking at what were the actual core skills that were needed from industry in my curriculum design and modules, different learning tools that were out there, the issues around Workplace 2020 about using social media to be more professional as opposed to reducing their professional skills about communicating, and then engaging, how to engage our students. And I looked at then, you know, what, what's, what do graduates say that engages them in the workplace? Um, in terms of the actual study then, I kind of looked at the modules that I teach. So how can I plan out my, um, in, if I'm teaching development, information systems development, how do I plan out the different lessons and teach them how to be a developer? Or if I'm teaching a security course, how do they, to teach them, show them how they become an IS security professional? And then kind of looking at the games that I used, the real life games, if they were effective or not in the reflective teaching. And I surveyed my students. So I asked them, what, how do you use social media? Uh, how, and when you graduate, how would you expect to be, you know, to be kept in contact? I think alumni and using a community of practice that exists is very helpful for our current students as well as our graduates. And I also looked at kind of surveying, as I said, their, our own our graduates, what they regard as the key learning things like um, assuming a role, mentoring, communities of practice. And then in, to give you an example of the types of role-based games that I employ in teaching. And this is, wasn't one I used for the MA, this is a current one where I teach information system security. And I thought that for students to learn not only about the theory, so teaching them how to put together an IS security strategy for defending an organisation, I said, right, I can get them to actually practice. So I asked my students to form groups and that they would come up with their own security company, but they would as well plan out and implement how they would safeguard that company. So using social media, they formed those fictitious companies and they put security technologies around it to protect an asset or a secret that they would give to me. But I also set up the, the actual challenge for them that they were to give me their asset at the start of the year, which could be a picture, it could be a recipe or anything, and they'd have to store that asset on a kind of a secure part of Facebook, a secure page. Then the other groups, they would get bonus marks if they stole another company, another student group's asset. So it was a case of role-based learning. They had to assume the role of the security professional in protecting their own asset as a group, but also they assumed the role of a hacker. They attacked other groups to steal their asset, and the motivation was extra marks. And they found this incredibly enjoyable. They thought it was brilliant, that it was basically stealing, trying to get information, trying to get the asset, and competing with their other groups, as well as learning how to be more proactive in that if you know what your, your enemy, your hacker, how to plan out what, they, what you are going to do, it's better to, that's a better way of understanding what you need to do to protect your company. Um, in my, and I do not, I continue to do surveys, I ask my students, so what do you use in social media? Do I have to, so in the security project, they use, face, they use Facebook a lot, so I got them to use Facebook. I got them to use Twitter to keep kind of a diary of their building up how they protected their own company as well as attacking the other company. And I looked for, again, moving on, how I can retain them, how I can, after they graduate, to get them to talk to my current and existing um, students. With the professional network, I spoke to graduates. And I said, you know, what engages you? So you can see the different sectors that our students work in, financial, manufacturing, any sector that has an IT department, and what they consider as kind of future employment factors, things like being able to adapt to their environment, working in teams, mentoring were huge things, or huge um, requirements that they wanted back. And I also asked them, you know, how can our department, the IS department, how do we keep in contact with you? What would you want from us to kind of build up that network? So things that came out really, the mentoring, ongoing training, career paths, team building were huge things that came back from industry. Oh. Um, at the end of my uh, master's, I came up with a design for a learning environment. 
So using social media uh, for my students where they would have real examples, they would work through tutorials, work together in teams. And the key thing here is it's a knowledge professional. So um, this was the design and since I did my MA um, in 2010 I've been looking for money for this for funding and it's only the last seven months where I'm after acquiring funding. So the next couple of years will be in building this. And this, it's the same diagram, but all I put in was, instead of kind of general professionals like in the last slide, I have this for IS security knowledge workers. So using all of these tools. So no matter what the knowledge worker, using these should, um, this kind of environment should enhance their skills. And just to highlight, as I said, that in the current, what I'm doing currently with teaching and research, in, I already described about the first one with BIS security, my module that I use kind of role-based hacking and, I, and role-based IS security professional to get them to understand what they will be doing when, after they graduate in industry, so very much role-based. The second option, MBS and ISBP, is a course that I coordinate and I took what I learned from Marion in terms of you know, designing out your modules, teaching for understanding, and also the role-based learning, and using tools like social media to apply across an entire programme. So I coordinate this information systems for business performance um, programme, and it's been very, very successful, kind of using what I've learned from the MA and everything else from Marion. So the research and development, um, I also took what I what I've learned and I adapted it with my own research. So I combined the learning environment in terms of, I, I do research in terms of security professionals and with disaster um, responding to emergencies, so first responders, paramedics, fire brigade. So they do an awful lot of that is actually training, preparing for a disaster like a flood. In Cork we have loads of floods. So how to prepare for it? So I took an awful lot of what I learned there and incorporated it into my own research. So I talked about the hacking game, so I'll just skip this. And I designed out, again, using the teaching for understanding and planning out my lessons. Let's quickly go through that. Teaching all the theory, and then getting the students to actually compete with one another. So how many, the different types of attacks that they performed on one another, and kind of to steal those assets. So they learned an awful lot from doing that, from the role-based side of it. So the findings, the competition, engaging them, not only learning about the role, but also getting them to compete. That was a huge, huge kind of selling feature for them. And to use things like what they do all the time, Facebook, Twitter. Um, this is my, the, the MBS and Information Systems for Business Performance. And I applied what I learned. What are the skills that industry want from our graduates? And these are students who are, want to get into IT, they come from varied backgrounds, they come from um, education, PE, they, physical education, they come from civil engineering, they come from business, and they want to come into a conversion course because there are a lot of jobs in IT. So I broke it up in terms of teaching and uh, the theory, but then in the last semester of the summer, they work with companies with a real problem, so they actually take on the role of, a, of an analyst someone who analyzes a problem and comes up with a solution using technology to, to fix the problem that the company are having. So developing the skills, applying the skills, and then undertaking a particular, you know, taking over the role of a practitioner. But to, de to, get, to develop all of these, as Mario and Mar Mar Betty were saying about integrating their learning and working with all of these companies. And the evidence that I was able to, that shows how I used what I've learned with the MA and all of the theory teaching for understanding. There's a lot of information on the slide, but I used that for my own programme. So I finished in 2010, and when I took over the programme, there were 14 students undertaking this. And I said, right, I have to develop these skills. For my, the students, this is what industry want. They want them to learn how to, you know, the application of those skills, to be ready to work really when they start. Um, so another thing in terms of quality and the reputation of the programme, word of mouth is a huge thing. So to sell the programme, I need to make sure that the students are, are happy with it, that they get jobs. And it kind of increased, 2012, 31 students, 2013, last year's group, 52 graduated. This year, we have 83 students. And that, to me, is a big, 
part that's evidence. Okay, students coming in and are, are they're getting jobs. There's almost 100% employment for it. So focusing on the core skills and then the application of those skills. And Mar Marion's signalling me now. <laughs> and with my own research, yeah, I just combined the, t the learning. This is a, a decision support system. A fifth of this system is actually what I did, the design of the learning management system. Um, so I was able to get, when, after getting funding, I'll just show you, but it's just the same diagram, just as bu bubbles instead of boxes. So using social media, exercises, role-based exercises, and in this case, it's professionals, paramedics, fire, as I said, firemen and women and decision makers responding to a disaster. So I was able to combine my teaching research with my actual research into security, into emergency management. And the final thing, we need to be able to engage our students and ensure that both traditional and um, you know, skills are taught as well as adapting to what industry wants from us. So those core problems, problem solving skills, as well as taking in those new and emerging technologies. So really adapting to the needs, but also ensuring that we have those core skills that they need. So thank you. Thanks, really.